Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me for the Draw Along show. I'm glad you're all here. And it is Wednesday, which means we have a second show tomorrow. So this is number one. These are nice. Wherever you are in the world, please be sure in the chat to tell us where you are watching from. And if you're watching on YouTube or on Twitter, please note that I am reading the chat on Behance. And you can find that at be.net slash live. Okay. Let's say hi to some folks who are joining us right now. We have Sam and Uriel and Alice and Anthony. How's it going, everybody? Hope you're doing well. And I hope you're ready to do some drawing with me. Now, folks, to do these drawings, you need to be able to uh, draw with something, right? So it could be a pencil, a pen, a marker, a crayon, or like I often say, a nice samurai sword. Great utensil for a drawing as well. You'd be surprised because you can get some nice fat lines, some nice thin lines, depending on how you angle the sword. Anyway, let's not uh, harp on all of that. Hey, folks, do you like horses? Let me ask you a question. Um, why couldn't the pony talk? It was a little horse. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Yeah, the jokes just don't get better on this show. Maybe I need a new writer or something. I don't know what it is. All right, now get your drawing stuff ready and let's begin. Today we are going to draw something that is cute for some folks, not cute for others, okay? Depends on who you are, depends on what you like. So you can tell me in the chat what you think about it. Um, to do these drawings, you have to be able to do three simple things. And they are a straight line, a curvilinear line, or a zigzag. Okay? If you can do those things, you can draw. And guess what? You can. So here we go. Today's drawing is going to start with a vertical line. It'll go a little something like that. Okay. Does it have to be perfectly straight, Kyle? You might be asking yourselves. The answer is no. You needn't worry about that. Uh, we have some more folks who've joined us. Hello, Afroha. How's it going? Nice to see you. Ida's here as well. Hey, Ida. Ada or Aida, if I'm saying that right. Anthony, nice to see you as well. Thanks for joining, folks. All right, carrying on. We are going to now move down and to the left. Now, if you were looking at a clock face, I would say this is about... Mm, 7.30, something like that, you know, where the hour hand is moving up just between the 7 and the 8, something like that. Here we go. A bump. All right. I know you can do this, gang. These drawings are so simple. Now we're just going to pop straight out this away. Here we go. Beep, like so. So see what we've done? We've made a shape that goes ba-bump, ba-bump, ba-bump. Okay. Easy peasy. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this very clearly. Now we're going to do a curvilinear line, but it's going to be a very shallow curve. And it's going to come up like this and then out slightly. Okay, check it out. Up we go and out slightly. See that? Up and out. There is going to be an interruption. All right, so check it out. I'm going to start coming up this way. Then I'm going to stop right there. Now let's imagine that there's a little gap. See this? I'm going to make a gap with an interruption. See that little space to the center between these two lines? The center would be about here, right? All right, so I'm not going to travel up to the center. I'm going to stop about here. So check it out. I'm going to go up, stop right about there. So I didn't quite make it to the center. Now, a lot of times in these drawings, we do symmetrical stuff. Today, we have a little bit of asymmetry going on. How exciting. All right, next I'm gonna connect these two, just like that, a bump. What on earth could this be? This one's a tough one to figure out until about five or six more pen strokes in, you're gonna say, ah, I get it. All right, now from here, right, where we change direction, we're gonna draw out this way. Okay, check it out. I'm gonna draw out this way and as I pass over this line, might make this a little longer. As I pass over this line, I'm going to curve slightly. Check it out. Coming out, slight curve, ever so slight. Look how slight that is. And then I'm going to pass back this way with another very slight curve. In we go. And then, all right, now from here, check this out. I'm going to travel up along the same line. I'm going to kind of draw over it and then in this way. Watch this. Up we go, and in that way. Another curvilinear line. Pretty interesting. 
Now this one, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm going to lay, hmm. Any guesses as to what we're drawing? Let's see if anybody has any guesses here. Not yet, not yet. Alrighty. Yeah, this is not one most people would figure it out right away. Okay, from here, we're gonna just draw a line like this. Bam. This is so confusing, isn't it, folks? All right, now, up, slight angle, okay? And then other side, up to the same stopping point. And then I'm going to come up with a slight curve. Check it out. Slight curve to about there, slight curve to about there. All right, now following this curve, I'm going to do that. Following this curve, I'm going to do that. And then right here, watch this. One, two. Wait a second. Now here, we're going to take our paper and we're going to spin it around 180 degrees. Take your paper, spin it around 180 degrees. Look at that. We are drawing a sleeping bat. We're drawing a sleeping bat. How fun. Now, remember this line? Carry it out a little bit further. And we're gonna go up like that. So we came out, down, and up. Now we're almost done, folks. Now over here, okay. And then here, I'm gonna do another scoop and then another scoop. And that gives us our little twigs at the end of that branch. And now for the tree, check this out. I'm just gonna do little lines like this to add a bit of texture for the cute. And some people might say, ew, not a fan, not into bats. You don't have to be, that's fine. Doesn't mean they're not fun to draw, right? So that is the you draw it portion of the show. Now remember, you can customize these drawings, make them your own, right? If you wanna have a little half moon up there or something like that to show us it's nighttime, right? Maybe a few Z's for our sleeping bat. It's about to wake up and go fly around. Maybe it's just be, the, the moon has just risen or maybe he's oversleeping. Maybe he's a lazy bat, I don't know. There you have it, folks. Hope that was fun for you. Uh, we are gonna move along now to a who made that. We haven't done one of these in a while. Here is your clue. Here is the clue for who made that. Now, what you have to do is look at this portion of a famous work of art and tell me if you know who the artist is who made this, okay? And then we'll reveal it. We'll talk a little bit about that artist. And then of course, it'll be time for the old animal and activity game where you will tell me an animal doing something funny, strange, weird, unexpected, bizarre, and then I will draw that for you in the time that we have remaining in the show. All right, so who knows? Comments, did I miss any comments? Nothing too important. All right, David Hockney. David Hockney. All right, so why don't we reveal the rest of this piece? And we'll talk about this. Now this one is called A Bigger Splash. Now David Hockney, still alive today, I believe he's about 83 years old, um, was part of the pop movement uh, in the 60s, uh, went to the Royal College of Art, I believe, um, almost didn't graduate when they wanted him to do a, a, a figure study as they let him pass anyway because they saw so much potential in his work. Interesting fellow. Um, English artist and uh, spent a lot of time living in the United States, still owns a couple of houses in the States. Um, and what happened was he moved to Los Angeles, I believe in the late uh, 60s, mid 60s maybe. Um, and he was really into all the swimming pools that he saw, which you don't see in England. Um, and he liked a lot. 
because of the brushwork that makes up this splash and it really interrupts this otherwise very static, very, very well designed. You know, he's thinking a lot about shape. Uh, this is no exception. Um, everything is really well considered there. It's a good piece of design. Um, the, the cool thing about Hockney is that he worked in so many different ways. He was interested in painting, fantastic portraits in colored pencil. You can look those up, portraits of friends and family and whatnot. Um, but he also got into photo collage in a way that was very unique. I'll show you one of those. Um, he called these photos that he made joiners. Here's a really beautiful one from Paris, a scene in Paris. And he would use a Polaroid camera and he would just take about 100, 200 photos of one particular location, um, just standing around, you know, moving 10 feet to the left, 10 feet to the right, etc., up and down. And then he would just collage them all together to create a scene like this. And these are just so fun to look at. I love them. Something about them too, when you look at them today, makes you think about a little bit of uh, digital sort of uh, approach to work. But you know, this was all done with traditional materials. Very cool analog work. Um, and so he did a whole bunch of these. And then after a while, he kind of said, all right, I think I've exhausted what I could do with the camera, went back to painting. I want to also show you, one of the things I love about his paintings is this combination of, again, flat design and shape-based um, design, right? Thinking a lot about shape and composition, etc., without a lot of depth. But then occasionally he would change the rules and he would show like a light source, for example, um, and maybe do a little bit of rendering. And I think it's so interesting to see that contrast between those two approaches in one single painting. In this, he is definitely showing us a clear, well, just like that, all done, right? Again, with the fabric showing folds and showing dimension and all that, but then we get really, really flat with some other treatments, right? Like the way this hair is, is painted. Uh, this vase has a bit of rendering, but then we get a little flatter with this chest of drawers here. You know, it's all so interesting. And then look at this. He just put some masking tape right here on the painting. That's masking tape, right? It shows up a couple other places. Um, and it just adds such an interesting design element to the piece. So I really, really love his work. It's a lot of it. He was also one of the first people to work digitally. Check out his iPhone and iPad experiments. Um, some of them made it to the cover of The New Yorker. Interesting fellow, tons and tons of work, very prolific, worth knowing David Hockney. Um, and there you go, that's who made that for today. Uh, we're gonna move on to the animal and activity where you're going to suggest for me, of course, a, whoops, whoop, there's an alarm. Holy cow, you know what that means. It is time for Appreciation Station. My goodness, I almost forgot about that. Shame on me. All right, now today we are appreciating Alice. Alice. Don't know if you remember this. We were trekking across the frozen tundra in Greenland. We were looking for that special kind of moss that had healing properties. And then that goblin materialized and asked us for all our food and water. And he was very threatening and I was very scared of him. And you had been practicing your breakdancing, and you just got right down on the ground and started doing the worm. And when you did that, he was so freaked out and thought you were some other kind of animal he'd never seen before, some kind of dangerous predator, and just booked it. He went running for his life. So thank goodness we were able to hold on to our rations. And I'm so glad you were taking those breakdancing classes, because I think you really saved us that day. And uh, we never did find that moss, but maybe someday we'll go back and look for it. I want to thank you again for your quick thinking. That's Appreciation Station today. Alice, thanks so much. All right, folks, now it is time for the animal and activity game. I'm going to look in the chat for your suggestions for an animal doing something strange, something funny or unexpected or weird, and then we're going to draw it and we're going to see how it goes. Now, last week we drew a cat playing cello. That's a good example of the kind of thing we do here on this show. So whatever you want to do, throw it in the chat. Let's see what we come up with today. Speaking of cats, here's a suggestion for a cat cliff diving. How about that? Um, cat cliff diving. An armadillo with a nacho food truck. Whew, clever. I like the idea. That's a lot of work. Got to draw a food truck? I don't know if I could do that. Uriel, a platypus, but doing what? Doing what, we ask? A hawk with a baby's rattle. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm starting to understand that one. A hawk with a baby's rattle. Is there a pun in there, Stephen? There must be. Um, all right, what else we have here? 
I've never done anything cliff diving before. We did just draw a cat last week. Um, an armadillo, I think I can sort of picture in my mind what that looks like. The armadillo is with a nacho food truck. Is the armadillo inside the food truck handing out the food? A T-Rex crocheting. Anthony, I like that too. That's pretty funny. Um, well, only got five minutes left. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I think uh, we're, we'll try the T-Rex because we haven't drawn a dinosaur in a long time. And everybody likes dinosaurs. So why don't we do that? Thanks for your great suggestions, everybody. I got my light blue here to sketch. And I'm going to draw this, uh, this T-Rex crocheting here, okay? So here we go. Gonna have his sad little T-Rex arms. Little needle here. They're called needles, right? Are they called needles or hooks or something? Or crocheting, I don't know. Actually, I want this tail to come out and up and then like that. That's what I want it to do. Change that shape a little bit. And get that foot out like that. Okay, that's better. Actually, I'm gonna have the head up here. Looking down at his work. And uh, maybe not totally sure what he's doing. Maybe looking a little unsure of himself. have this just kind of like this and here's our ball of yarn like that okay that feels okay to me Now I get my darker blue. We'll jump up to a new layer here. And let's see how this goes. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to change his head just a little bit like that. Just a few feathers, because as you know, we've learned recently, the old uh, dinosaurs, like T-Rex and some others, probably were feathered, right? Isn't this what we've been told now? Sounds pretty cool to me. After all, after all, they're they're related to, uh, to to birds, right? Isn't that the deal? I know there are some awesome dinosaur fans. So he's got some thread there, a little needle, and then he's just sort of sitting here looking cute, just sitting on the floor, on the ground. I guess there were no floors back then. And there's one little dinosaur foot. And the other one, poking out that way. Let's 
And we gotta do our little crochet thing here. And have this thread come over here to a ball of yarn. Okay. Give them a little place to sit. I'll hide that sketch for a second. And a bit of texture, right? Maybe he's a right? A little pterodactyl. And there we go. So that was a good suggestion. Thanks, everybody. Always something new, always something different. That's what's fun about the animal activity game, and that's why I enjoy it so much. Um, I like this show to be aimed at all ages, and I would love for children to have an opportunity to do the draw along portion of the show at the beginning. Um, and if you are doing these drawings, share them with me. I'd love to see them on Twitter. Uh, hit me up at Kyle T. Webster. Show me what you've done. Really makes my day to see those drawings. I'll be back tomorrow at the same time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 Pacific. Till then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Everybody, please be kind, and I'll say ciao for now.